Welcome back to the uh, channel, dudes. I made it back to Michigan, and it only took about a month to get here from Florida, and it's been about a month since I posted last, so I think it's time to catch you up to date. First and foremost, I fucked up. My hard drive with the last three years of my life on it broke. Did I have a backup? Maybe some sort of cloud situation? No, uh-uh. No, I didn't, so. Luckily, I did save a few of the videos from the remainder of the road trip back up here to Michigan. And well, enjoy. Also, fun fact, I learned how to do a Rubik's Cube. Turns out you don't have to be that smart to do them. <laughs> Before making my way to Alabama, I found canyons in Georgia, AKA some glorified sandcastles, but still pretty cool to see in Georgia. Why did I wear shoes? The one time that I wear shoes, it's all sand. Come on. Poor choices, poor choices. <laughs> Place, but there were a lot of kids. Can I pet that dog? For the last half of the hike, I heard footsteps behind me. When I would speed up, they would speed up. When I'd slow down, they would slow down. When I stopped, and they stopped. I turned around, it was a 14-year-old boy following me. He ended up tagging along for the rest of the hike. He was harmless, but at the end, he did take a picture of us and say he was gonna hang it above his bed, so. <laughs> I was in desperate need of a shower. There were no Planet Fitnesses around. My bus tank was not full enough. In bumfuck nowhere, Georgia, on the border of Alabama, there was this like side little park. I wouldn't even call it a park. It's just a circle of dirt and this fountain. And I met a family. If I had the footage, that'd be great, but I don't. But there was a family and they were filling up these massive water jugs, about 15 of them. So I figured if they're drinking it and they're still alive, I could probably shower in it. So I waited for the place to clear out. I showered in this thing. It was one of the greatest showers I've ever had. I don't even know what to call it. It's just like a natural spring roadside fountain hose thing. I don't know. But it was fresh water, ice cold. It was absolutely awesome. Minus my severe OCD issue of wasting water. I want to turn it off. I made some food, packed up, and then found the most beautiful spot I could find for the night. The side of the highway. Not to get all sad and depressing, but later that day I ended up finding out that a dear friend and co-worker passed from a skydiving accident while I was at the canyon. So, I'm not gonna lie, I got pretty sad for a few days. I ended up spending three days in this random parking lot. I'm pretty sure I was still in Georgia. But after that, I figured it was time to get out of the hole, get outside, do a hike, something. So, I ended up driving to my all-time most favorite waterfall, which just happens to be in Alabama. I found this place a year ago. Despite it being a Macintosh screensaver looking kind of waterfall, what makes this place so special is the man that lives at the top of the trailhead. In order to get to the waterfall, you have to stop in this man's front yard. His name's Captain, and you'll always find him sitting on his porch. Hello, oh, he's still sitting there. I was excited to see if he remembered me. I have quite the soft spot for lonely elderly people. Captain lost his wife a few years ago, which was his entire world. So now his health is declining, and all he has are his animals. Good to see you. Very good to see you. I'm gonna give you one. <laughs> we caught up for a bit. He ended up having a pretty rough year. Although his backyard is such an incredible destination, living here comes at a price. There ain't many people in this world like you. Back at you. I've had a bunch of riff raff in here yesterday, and I'm just about to put me a sign up there and close. I'm not worry with people no more. I don't know if you remember seeing my puppy. Yes. Katie Bug. Some women come here and stole her right out of the yard while I was going to eat supper. I don't know where she's at, and I probably won't never get to see her again. And then the mail carrier run over mm -hmm. to at one time, and I jumped that pile of dirt and killed him in the road. What? She never did to come back and say, I'm sorry, nothing she meant to do. Buddy. Losing a pet is like losing a child. I started tearing up because I lost my child last year and it still it sucks. Not only did Captain's dogs get stolen and killed, his house has fallen apart and he's too old and broke to do anything about it. He doesn't have a cell phone, so I took down his mailing information and I told him that I was going to mail a letter this summer. I think it would be absolutely awesome to include a check in that letter to either help him get a security system for his house or money to help fix his roof or his floor. Anything that would just make this guy's life a little bit easier and bring some sort of joy to him because apparently there's no one else out there to do it. Um, I'm going to start a GoFundMe and I'm going to put it in the description below. If you want to donate to Captain, that would be fucking rad. If not, that's cool too, but I think it would be really cool to, to help this guy out. So, donate if you want to donate. 
I made it to Tennessee. Barely. The fuck? And I came across this lady that was selling sugar gliders and monkeys. I had always wanted a monkey until I saw this guy stick his man wiener out of the cage and piss right on the floor. So I held the sugar glider and, well, meet Slider. Slider the glider. Yes, I'm impulsive. I carry around two guns in my bus, but I've never shot them. On my way out of Tennessee, I stopped in at my dear friend Luke's house, and we went shooting. It's a good thing we did, because they both kept getting clogged. I don't even know what this is. I mean, it looks like a bullet backwards. Uh, yeah. It's like some alcohol and shit. Like, <laughs> we shoot ourselves. Ooh. Good luck. Thanks. We're definitely not professionals, but we probably survived. It turned out to be an awesome and relaxing week with Luke and Stretch. I ended up staying longer than expected, so the rest of the trip was just beelining it straight to Michigan. <laughs> Scott Up to Come See has been my home for the past three summers, and there's a reason I keep on coming back. These nut jobs. Imagine a bunch of adults who never grew up at a daycare with extreme sports and no supervision. It's constant chaos at all times, especially considering we are all neighbors. We all live on the airport, so there's no escaping. So this is where I'll be posted up for the remainder of the summer. Follow along for all the drop zone shenanigans, because I promise there is a lot. If you're in bumfuck North Michigan this summer, come and join the shenanigans. Speaking of shenanigans, I just got approval to do something I've been trying to do for five years. Super sketchy, super dumb, but very confident to pull it off. And it will be a world first, so super excited about that. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a good day. I'm gonna step outside my front door and I'm gonna jump out of a plane. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever the hell you kids are doing these days. <laughs> oh, can't have nice things. I'll catch you guys on the next one.